Fajuli. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, I'm gonna teach you how to make pasta fagioli. What it literally means is pasta and beans. It is an Italian dish. I'm not particularly Italian, but I have had a DNA analysis done in which I have approximately 3% Italian ancestry. So, I can do a little bit of this, and none of my siblings have any Italian, uh, <laughs> they didn't pick up any Italian genes, only me. So, boom, there you go. Let's get going. Immediate substitution. The only Italian sausages I have are chicken sausages. So that's not traditional, like chicken would not be traditional, but I will comment that the quality of this sausage is far superior to any Italian sausage that you buy at the Kroger. So what I am foregoing in uh, porkiness, I am uh, adding to the dish in qualité, as it were. Well, uh, start with our Dutch oven. We'll get that going over medium heat and then I will use some gloves to unceremoniously untube this sausage. Bulk sausage would be much better. I actually probably have that somewhere in the depths of my freezer, but I, you know, I dug through approximately two-thirds of it and then I got tired and my hands got cold. So here we are and here we are over here. These sausages often uh, don't have a an exact um, they're, they're, act, they're frequently not sealed into the casing or tied. So in this case, I should be able to just squeeze that shit out. Really, really good YouTube content for you perverts. But given the opportunity to squeeze something out of a tube for your viewing pleasure, I said yes. And the audience said, thank you very much. Oh yeah. This is about one pound of sausage. Okay, over here we'll begin browning our snossage. I will give this a big heaping glug of olive oil, and the olive oil will mix with the sausage fat. It'll be quite nice. Let's go ahead and pop that in there. If you can break it up, try not to splash oil out of the pot like I just did. That's dangerous, and you need to practice good safety. You need to practice good safety. And while that's browning, we can work on our veggies. Now, uh... I'm a little bit tired, but not like um, not like whiny tired, just like tired. So I'm gonna do a lot less chopping than I normally do, and I'm gonna hand it over to Phil, the food processor. There he is. I'm still learning how a food processor works. So I'm gonna try to use this food processor to process some foods. The mirepoix that we'll be using today will be carrots and celery and onion, which is mirepoix. And typically it's finely minced, so it kind of blends into the soup, or the sauce rather. And a food processor is great for that, so I've heard. So I'm just gonna, gonna get it in there and see if I can't get a nice fine mince. You might even call it a sofrito which is a term we know from our uh, Puerto Rican friends. Two carrots, two ribs of celery, and an onion. That's what we'll be using today. So let's give it a try. Wow, I actually feel like that's almost perfect for what we're really going for today. It's pretty much good. Let's give it another blitz for good measure. And bada boom, bada bing, we have our sofrito. It's perfect, pretty much exactly what I wanted. So as we cook that down into the soup, we'll add aromatic flavor and breadth. Breadth, bread to this. Over here, we'll continue to move our sausage around. No concerns if some of it sticks to the bottom. You know, ultimately, that will be flavor. So just another couple minutes here on the sausage, and we'll be ready for the next step. While that's cooking, a couple comments. Uh, I did do a tiny bit of prep, which is I soaked some dried beans. These are great northern beans. This is half a pound of beans, which when I put it in the jar was about this high, about halfway up the jar. And overnight, they soaked up all that water. They got bigger and bigger, and now they are soaked beans. You can absolutely use canned beans, and in fact, we're gonna use canned beans in addition to dried beans. But I really like the texture of freshly cooked beans, and I think that'll make it, make this dish a little bit nicer. We'll be back. Okay, my snossage is brown. Hey, if I told you that was pork, you might believe it. Hey guys, it's pork. Sausage. Ho, ho, ho. I'm a, I'm a trickster. Okay, there's actually not too much fat left in the left in the pot, so I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil, and I'm gonna get the sofrito going. 
And because it's a fine mince, we'll need to move it around pretty regularly so nothing burns. And hey, guess what? We're not done using the food processor tonight. So we will go ahead and rinse this out. You can make this dish if you don't have a food processor. Uh, you could use a knife and slice things thinly. Here we are working on the veg, as it were. We'll cook this down maybe five minutes or so. So those aromatics are very nice and open. I'm curious if we can blitz this garlic. There's three cloves of homegrown garlic. They're big. I'm just gonna throw them in there and see what happens. It's like a little garlic party. Uh, that was not that effective. Yeah, that was not that great, but it's good enough. I'm not sure if I would have done a better job from chopping it myself, so. Good enough for government work. And we'll pop that in there when the sofrito is just about done. You can see I got a little bit of, a little bit of fond there. We'll try to deglaze that a little bit later. But now we'll just let this cook for a few minutes. This is a can of tomato paste. The amount of tomato that you use in this is totally up to you. Some folks, some folks just throw in a little tomato paste. Other folks just throw in some whole tomatoes, or I mean, uh, fresh tomatoes rather, that they chop, they don't throw them in whole. We're gonna go kind of light on the tomato today. No reason, just what I feel like doing. I think that's it for now. Be back soon. All right, my garlic, excuse me, my garlic. Olive oil. Get that aired up a little bit. You can see there's some very large chunks of garlic in there, so someone will have a nice surprise. It'll probably be me, and I'll probably be very happy about it. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna say we'll use about half a can of tomato paste. Well, that should be plenty. So stirring that up together, like so, you can see that that, that veg is kind of mushifying. Will make for a nice base for the gravy. And while I'm at it, since we're at this stage, I'm gonna like shove our vegetal paste to the side. I'm gonna crank the heat up and I'm gonna try to deglaze. Now it's certainly not necessary to do this, but I just wanna get more flavor off my pan. So I'm gonna add a splash of wine, which is not necessary whatsoever. I don't think it's traditional either, but that's probably the easiest way to deglaze. I have this dry sherry, which has just been hanging out on my counter for who knows how long, but it's literally just for cooking. We'll get that going. And we'll scrape, 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 scrape. And what's the worst that can happen? You know, it'll just taste better. Success. That's the worst thing you can have. Okay. Let's get our beans going. Here those beans, our bloated beans, soaked in the finest tap water available to me. Those are half pound of beans. Give them a rinse and we'll pop those bad boys in. These are our fazool, our fajoli. Now you get some liquid in here, stat. How stat? Stat. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a once around my food processor to simultaneously clean it of remaining garlic and it just gets the liquid going in here. We will add stock paste in order to um, you know enhance the flavor here, but I just wanna get some liquid in there now, get the ball rolling. And what will we do next? We're gonna use the food processor again. The consistency really can vary, but a common way to get this to be kind of a thicker sauce would be to blend a can of beans with some water. So, like I said, we use, we're using fresh beans and we're using canned beans. So are also great northern. Probably would have gone with cannellini, but I couldn't find any, and that's fine. That's my beans. Tell you what, these are some stinky beans. Sometimes you open a can of beans and it's just, it just ain't it, you know? That's, that's what these beans are. We'll do like a can of water. Like so, and we will puree. Looks great. Good. We'll go ahead and pop that in. And we'll mix like so. Okay, so far so good. Let's go ahead and bring it back to a simmer. We're gonna go ahead and add our meat back in. And I will go ahead and add one of my favorite ingredients, BTB chicken. Often you would use a chicken stock for this. We could have gotten real weird with it and tried to make like, instead of doing pork with chicken stock, we could have done chicken with pork stock, something like that. that could have been fun. But instead we're doing chicken and chicken. Isn't that, isn't that exciting? I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with Italian seasoning. This is Kroger Private Selection Italian Seasoning, Marjoram, Thyme, Rosemary, Savory, Sage, Oregano, and Basil. And already, you can see it's starting to look like something that looks quite edible, but it is in fact not edible yet because those beans are uncooked. So we will need to let this stew for quite some time and we need to add more liquid, which I'll go ahead and add a little bit more. I typically use like six to eight cups of liquid total. We've been adding it a little bit at a time, so I'm just gonna eyeball it today. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks real nice. And I will comment that uh, I have not salted anything at this point. I like to wait on the salt when it comes to cooking beans until near the end. I think it's partially superstition that beans cook faster if they are not salted. Uh, I am not a scientist. I don't know shit about So I uh, rely on superstition sometimes to, <laughs> to, to just cook. 
I will add some pepper, black pepper, because I don't think that has anything to do with how beans cook. And that is pretty much it for the time being. We're just gonna simmer this. Those beans ideally will take about 45 minutes to cook, but if you know if you're working with dried beans, even if you soak them, sometimes they just take longer. We'll check on them periodically and we'll give you updates. We'll be back soon, but actually it'll, it will be back in like 45 minutes. Okay, it has been one hour uh, of simmering and the beans, by and large, are cooked. Really the way to test them is by tasting them, but I do like to grab some beans that are whole and give them a taste. Tastes great. Could go a little bit longer. They're not al dente by any means, but they are, they could cook a little longer. So, I'm gonna turn the heat up and we're gonna finish this by adding pasta. Now, I'm, uh, I meant to tell you that um, apparently the there is a traditional Italian bean, which I think is the Bonolini or Borolini, something like that. Not widely available here in the United States, so any old bean will do. And also, the Ditalini, 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 is the pasta of choice for this dish. I think that uh, it's gonna be a tall task for us to cook the pasta without adding a little bit more liquid, but maybe we will. And the amount that you put in, your choice. But it's always very important that when you are working with a small pasta, that you use it somewhat sparingly because it really will expand in this context. So we're gonna do about a cup and a half of pasta, which just from eyeballing it is about half of a pound, I think. And you can see even before that pasta cooks, too thick, too thick, five me. So I'm gonna add some more liquid. We'll see how it treats us. I'm liking that, just, just looking at it now. And we'll simmer that until al dente. It probably should take about eight minutes. And in the meantime, we can get our garnish ready, which is fresh grated parm, parmogiano. It is legit parm. I will be using a microplane today. That's what I'm doing right now to grate the cheese. But if you needed a lot more than we need today, you could use that food processor one more time and just really minimize the amount of, of tools that you have. That should be sufficient for two servings, I should hope. We'll be back soon. All right, I am happy with where we're at in this dish. So just to give you a kind of an idea, here's what we're working with. You can see this nice and soupy or stewy and our pasta. It's cooked, our beans are cooked. So we're ready to do the final seasoning. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of salt now, but I think I'm broadly, broadly I'm gonna uh, leave the dish a little bit under salted and let people salt it to taste. It's flavorful enough, it actually doesn't really need too terribly much salt. Oh, it's quite nice, really quite nice. So let's go ahead and plate it up and finish it. And the way that we'll finish it will be a little bit of nice, or whatever olive oil you have, just do a drizzle over the top and however much Parmesan cheese you would like to add. This cheese will melt into the soup, but for our picture today, I'm just gonna dump it on top in a mountain. So I think that's fun. And then no one can accuse me of not adding parm. And there we have our pasta bazoo. All right, let's give it a taste. I'll mix my, my cheese in. You can see that it just eats that cheese right up. It's gonna be hot, so it's probably gonna hurt. <laughs> Friggin' delicious. I really, really recommend that olive oil drizzle. I feel like it it takes um, a fairly humble dish and makes it taste uh, almost indulgent or luxurious. I think that it kind of tastes of like classic Italian flavors. Very, very wholesome. It's pretty much the perfect thing to eat now that it's chilly outside. And of course, we'll have some crusty bread as well for dipping because there's not enough carbs in the beans and the pasta. Fantastic. But yeah, that's our recipe today, and I'm looking forward to eating this. That's how you do it. See you next time on PGC. Bye-bye.